everyone! My name is Lehua and welcome to the Superfina channel where we like to review games by sharing our impressions and how we played the game. And our Superfina review is on Illusion of La Falsia, a turn-based RPG created by Xcreate and published by Kemco. This game is available on a Nintendo Switch, so if you're wondering how it is, welcome! We're about to show you, especially on the next scene, where we are going to showcase some gameplay. Right now, we're going through a dungeon. Unfortunately, there's no map for the dungeon, so we're just going by ear, improvising. Fortunately, whenever we're going to approach a monster, these lights do show up. It will turn like yellow, orange, and red. Red means we're about to approach a monster and enter into a battle play. So next, we have Riser. I'm gonna have him pick a attack where it's gonna hit multiple enemies, and it does cost 52 MP, but that's okay. We have MP to spare, and we have some potions to replenish our MP just in case. So we're gonna pick this one that just throws daggers at random enemies. So let's do this. It's highlighting all four. Hopefully it hits all four. And we see this and it... I was a little doubtful of Riser's attack because I have Tiana. She has a similar attack and sometimes it doesn't hit all the enemies. Sometimes it only hits one or two. So now I'm like a little leery about using these attacks. But I am also hopeful because I love hitting enemies all at once. Alright guys, so I have discovered that these monsters are weaker to magic attacks. So we're going to go with the magic attack, go with the light arrows, and target one of our enemies. Probably the one in the front. And see that? Watch. He's boosting it up. Then we're going to go with another ally, and we're going to use another magic attack doing the water shoot. This one does a vertical attack. We're going to activate that, and then we're going to do another magic attack. We're going to use water shoot again, do another vertical attack, and here we go. Boom! There you go. 300 damage. That's a lot. And with cougars, 300 again so these monsters are weak against magic so from here on we can utilize those magic attacks and win this battle hopefully before anyone dies as i can see our hp is pretty low so with fedio we're gonna use his white magic we are going to heal one of our allies and we're gonna heal cougar see that go fedio go heal cougar Welcome back! Now we're going into more detail on gameplay and our impressions. Now this game is a JRPG. There's a lot of dialogue and fortunately for me, I like to read so I didn't mind all that dialogue. But if you don't like to read too much and you just pressed AAA and skipped everything, you can go back and read on the text. And on the text, you can speed it up too. We're gonna go into that screen where you can control that option. There is a lot of dialogue, and as the characters are speaking, the text is showing up in the box. And if you wanna quicken that, you can either just go AAA, or you can go to the settings and get to the screen over here and change the speed of the text. As you can see over here, I already have it on instantly. It, it can go from slow, normal, or instantly and it's real. The text just pops up in that box. Now that you know how to control the dialogue, there's a reason for the dialogue, and that's because this game has a story. All RPGs have a story, and the story of this game is there is the Sword of Amal. It can grant wishes, and our characters are searching for the map to get to the Sword of Amal. Unfortunately, the map is in six different pieces. So our goal is to look for the different pieces, put it together, and find the Sword of Amal. And each member in our party has a wish they want granted. Introducing our characters. We have Riser. He's a seeker. He's been looking for the pieces of the map to the Sword of Amal for a very long time because he is determined to get his wish granted. His weapon of choice is Dagger. Cougar, he is a leopard. He's been Riser's partner for a very long time. And his choice of weapons are 
knuckles. Which makes sense because he's an animal and he can only use his paws to fight. Tiana, she is the first character we encountered. She's a little prissy, has her own ideologies. She does not mesh well with Riser. At least in the beginning, she doesn't. Her weapon of choice is the bow. Furio, he's the second character we encounter. He is with Tiana. They sort of have a master-servant relationship, but it doesn't reveal what they really are until later on. His weapon of choice is a sword. Him and Riser are very similar in their attack styles. And the last character we encounter is Claudina. We meet her much later in the game and her weapon of choice is an axe. She is a heavy melee fighter. So she's different from everyone else where we have a dagger, knuckles, a bow, a sword, and then we have the heavy hitter. Another character that we encounter frequently is Irie. He is our informant. He lets us know where the pieces of the map are, which helps us get to the sword of them all. All these characters have their distinct personalities and characteristics and pretty much most of them have their own backstory which makes it more interesting because that's what I love about RPGs, our story. Controls! I want to explain the controls because it is not your typical mechanics. So to get to menu it's actually X. X takes you to our menu. You can get to items, magic, gems, stories, etc, etc. And to exit, you just press B and the start button is actually our save. We can save anytime we want. All we need to do is press the start button. While exploring, I suggest you use the D-pad to move your characters because using the stick isn't as smooth. I found using the D-pad to be a lot easier. Over here, we have Rune Gem. Gems are acquired throughout the gameplay and they enable our characters to use white magic or black magic. That's right, our characters are not designated with a certain type of magic. They are acquired through the gems. Now there are other gems that will help with our stats like health, strength, magic, etc, etc. Each character has a room and the room holds the gems. As you can see, there are little X's on the room that block out spaces where the gems can be placed. You can put as many gems as you want on the room, but they have to fit without overlapping. Over here, you can see that I have Claudina. Claudina, I am maxing it out. I'm trying to put as much gems as possible. Over here, you can see Furio's one. I'm trying to put as much gems on his too because the more gems you have, the more you can use it during the battle play. Battle play! So in the battle play, we are encountering monsters or enemies. It is a turn base. So if you see at the top over here, we can see who will be next in their turn. And once it's our turn, we can either attack, use phantom skills, or magic. And as I said before, the gems enables our characters to use certain types of magic. Over here we can see white magic, black magic, or mixed magic, meaning that is someone who has a white or black gem. Even though this game is a turn based, we don't always have to take turns. If we know that the enemies are easy to take care of, we can go by automatic and that's by pressing X. Automatic will let your characters just fight on your own and you can just wait there. This is really helpful because we're going to be encountering monsters all the time. We can't see them, we can't avoid them, we're just going to encounter them and fight. So this autoplay will enable us to go through the battle play super quick and you won't find it so tedious. But if there is an enemy that's pretty hard to fight, what I like to do is I like to cut down their defenses. So with that, I have to control what type of attacks or magic that my character is going to use. I like to cut down the defenses and then I like to bring down the health of my enemy. And once I know I'm safe, I'll just go with automatic attacks and just let it go on its own. After acquiring Claudina, we are given the option to use skill chain attack during the battle play. That enables us to use all of our party members to attack all at once in one turn. To activate the skill chain attack, all we need to do is press R. Skill chain attack can only be used when our gauge is full and to fill up the gauge, we use phantom skills. 
Once the gauge is full, we can activate the skill chain attack and kick some butt! During gameplay, we can position our characters in certain positions. It's actually just forward or backward, and we have an option to shift them. But if we already want to have a set formation, we go to strategy. Strategy has formation or tactics. Formation enables us to position our characters before any battle play. That way we don't have to shift them during our turn. Members in the front will give or take 20% more damage, while members in the back will give or take 20% less damage. So there's pros and cons for positioning your party members. Tactics. This section enables players to decide what party member is going to focus on during the battle play. You can either go for configure all and let the game decide for you or you can decide individually. This will depend what you prefer or what's your style and that's awesome that we have freedom of choice. Thank you guys for watching this super fina review of Illusions of La Falsia developed by Xcreate and published by Chemco. If you guys like this video, don't forget to give it a like and if you want to see more, subscribe and up for that notification on future uploads. You can also find me on social media on Instagram and Twitter at Lehua Superfina. And we stream. We stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Lehua Superfina on Tuesdays and Thursdays. 4.30 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time and Saturdays 9.30 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time. My name is Lehua and this was my super fina review of the game Illusion of Lafalsia, a turn-based RPG developed by Xcreate and published by Chemco. This game is available on the Nintendo Switch. I hope you like this review. Let me know in the comments below. Until next time everyone. Bye!